Okay, 4.30. We'll meet to order. Um, all members are present except Bruce. And we're going to begin today with the elementary school students presentation. So we're going to mix up the order just a little bit. Um, so if we can invite uh, Kathy and your crew to uh, Mrs. Akerson, come on up and uh, show us what you got today. I have nine of my elementary friends joining us today for our school board meeting. Um, and what an honor and a privilege for me to be able to bring um, to you students from Painesville Elementary School. You recall in December, I brought over third, fourth, and fifth graders to show the great things that were happening at their grade levels. And I thought this is a perfect opportunity for some of our younger learners uh, to come on over and talk about the things that are happening at their level as well. Um, so we um, were able to connect just a couple times real brief. And so this is really impromptu and um, we have a lot of excitement uh, from our students to be here. So thank you for this opportunity. Our presenters today, I'd like to introduce them to you. From kindergarten, if you want to give a wave, we have Bad Campson, give a wave to our school board members. Aspen Neatfeld. Aspen, want to give a wave? Peyton Gerken is joining us from kindergarten as well. First grade, we have Jonathan Payne, James Haynes, Violet Clark. And from second grade, we have Silas Serna, Henley Kirsten Hahn, and Sophia Rasmussen. So they will each be uh, taking an opportunity to talk about a few things today that I think you'll be impressed with. So looking from our, or hearing from our kindergarten students, what would you like to share, Thad, about kindergarten? What's some happenings in kindergarten? Oh. Art, and tell us a little bit more about art. What do you do in art in kindergarten? We paint and color and stuff. Okay, who would like to go next? Peyton, would you like to talk about kindergarten? We tell us some time. You tell sometimes, and how do you tell time? Using what? Using a clock on Mrs. Ludwig board. So we're learning how to tell time in kindergarten. That's pretty special. Okay. Other kindergarten. What would you like to share? Count by fives. Count by fives in kindergarten. And we count by fives all the way up to what? 100. 100. Wow. So that's pretty impressive in kindergarten. Thank you, kindergartners, for sharing. You can see some other skills that they're working on as well. Hearing from our first graders, we're going to have Jonathan get started sharing about Google hey. Classroom. So Google Classroom, we would, Yay. this is where we would Yay. know what to do when we would do our daily five and morning meeting. So. So, dear school board members, good morning. Today is Tuesday, and I hope you learn about how we use iPads in our class. They make learning fun. Miss Nelson puts new slides in Google Classroom every day. We use them for our morning meeting and daily five reading. Sincerely, Jonathan. So, we would say the date. Then, uh, and we would drag our thing, our number into the position. We would say how many days we have been in school. Then we would count by tens. And we would usually have a word of the day. And we would get started for our daily five. These are the five things we do each day for daily five. Daddy. We would do writing, Daddy. word work, iPad, Snelson's table, and read to self. And usually for word work, it would be word mapping, which would be 
you would uh, So we are learning about the ER, IR, and UR. So you would press this, tap the start button, and listen. So we would tap it, then we would write it, and then we would go to the next one. We would keep doing that <laughs> on this paper. So we would like write like how many syllables, kind of like like h, er, her. We would write the h, and then the er one, and write it on the line. So we would do that. Then we would do writing, which we would click this link. And we would go to the spelling sentences. We would click the microphone and we would hear what it says. Then we would write the, the sentence and we would go from 1 to 11. With? With this kind of paper. We would write our capital and write a period. We'll check that and we'll go to the next one. And next, we would do some sort of uh, iPad thing. We would do our Excels or boom cards. Usually, it's at least three um, boom cards or three Excels. And then after that, we would listen for 15 minutes. And then we will, and then if we have time, we would do listen to reading on Epic. And we would do that daily five, then it would be time for lunch. So if you recall, um, COVID and distance learning, Google Classroom was our platform. And so that was a good thing that came out of how we changed education and accessing our curriculum to students. And so many teachers brought that forward, um, even though we changed our in-person model, right, back to in-person. So we were able to utilize some of these tools, such as Google Classroom that Jonathan talked about, um, which is you know, really a, a great thing that, that came out of it. Uh, thank you, Jonathan, for sharing. Violet is going to share with us something special that they do on their iP iPads as well. Me to hold. So first, what we do is when we're done with our work in the morning, we go to a QR and then we scan some different things and then we have to listen to it. We do extra math for a QR code story. Would you like to scan and show them how that works? So first we always scan. And then we find our name. You go down, and then you're gonna type in your code, and then you're gonna sign in, and then you press continue to start it, and then this is how you get the numbers. Okay. So we use extra math to help with our fact fluency, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. That's what they're using here. Again, this is their access point um, where they can just use that code and it brings them right to where they need to be. Next, we have James sharing about Seesaw. <coughs> so I'm gonna go into my journal. Then I have all the things I've done. James, can you tell us when do you use Seesaw? We usually use it in the morning during lunch. 
during that reading time again google classroom and seesaw are used and what other special class do you use seesaw and james we usually don't use it in any other class how about um scene yes we did the coding board that's another place anything else james you'd like to share with seesaw <laughs> Now I'm in mine. I made a baseball stadium with dots. Ms. Pfeiffer let me use the pen. So how we did that is we went into shapes and and we went to circle and then I made a baseball stadium with it. First graders, anything else from your grade that you would like the school board members to know that you're learning about? Violet? We're learning about some subtraction and additions. And then we are learning about counting to 190. Very good, thank you first graders. Let's hear from our second graders, starting with Sophia. So uh, for extra math, we there's um, six second, three second, two second, and then 1.5 second, addition and subtraction. And then there's times and division. And when we were writing to a thousand, we wrote by ones, twos, fives, and tens. Thank you, Sophia. Silas. Um, okay, so in Mrs. Space class, that's the class that I'm in, um, um, we do science on Fridays because, because all of you know that Fridays are the best days of the week. Oh. <laughs> 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 and we usually do it on Mystery Dog. And in STEAM, we are building Ozobot City. It's still in the making. Wow, it's cool. And then we are all doing Mother's Day special gifts. And then we and then and then for reading we have AR goals. We just started having them like in third quarter. AR testing, vocabulary, and journal writing. We do that on Mondays. And Kenley, what would you like to share about second grade happenings? What are some of your favorite things? Um, one of my favorite things is the test is. And then we're done with writing to a thousand. We do dot to dot to me. Second graders, anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up? All right, then our last slide is an opportunity for you to ask any questions from our to our kindergartners, first graders, and second graders. Any questions? I have one. If Friday is the best day of the week, what is Monday? Uh, probably the worst. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so should we not have school on Monday? Yeah, we yeah. have. Yeah. Just on Tuesday. Oh. Friday. <laughs> no, we didn't. We know that they're all very proficient and very well spoken. Um, do we really need teachers? <laughs> yeah. Do we need teachers? No, we don't. No, no. We don't need any teachers. You know, These might be our future teachers, and so I'm excited that they had this opportunity to present all the great things that um, they are doing at our Pinsville Elementary School. With that, thank you. We will hand it back over to the school board and um, we'll take the questions again. Good job. Yeah. Mrs. Akerson, would you like to just stay up and um, write into your report? Sure. <laughs> Great segue um, with Teacher Appreciation Week. 
This is the work of our teachers that you all see. Um, grades three, four, five, our special education teachers, um, our specialist teachers. What um, a special week. So this week is Teacher Appreciation Week, and I just want to give a sincere and heartfelt thank you to our teachers at Painesville Elementary School. Um, this is certainly a special time for all of us to reflect on the lifelong impact that educators have on our students, um, on each other, our school, our district, and community. And so I wanted to share my favorite quote as an educator with all of you, and it's by um, Jimmy Casas, if you ever get a chance to read any of his work or see him speak, but here's his quote. In the end, your legacy won't be about your success. It will be about your significance and the impact you made on every student every day and whether you were willing to do whatever it took to inspire them to be more than they ever thought possible. And that's why we are here as educators um, and taking opportunity this week to recognize and show appreciation to our teaching staff. Also, tomorrow is our school nurse recognition day. I think it's important that we recognize our school nurse. Um, she, Rachel Brown, has been covering um, elementary and secondary, and so I want to give her a, a special thank you as well. Um, her dedication and her services uh, to our health office, you know, from that simple putting on a Band-Aid to stopping a bloody nose, um, to giving medication, to responding to medical emergencies. Um, her depth of knowledge and dedication is appreciated. Kindergarten update. We are currently at 68 students registered for kindergarten next year. And so um, I'm very appreciative um, that we will be adding a fourth section to our kindergarten team um, in the fall. So thank you for the support um, from the school board, from Superintendent Bullard and our, our staff, just really utilizing our resources and um, having that come to fruition with the numbers that are supporting that fourth section. <clears throat> second grade music program, um, Mrs. Strand and the second grade teachers and students put on a great show a few weeks ago called the best pet show ever. Uh, we had great attendance and I wanna say thank you to the families and friends that were able to come. Um, you know, those programs like this give our students opportunity to be in front of an audience um, where they get to practice various skills along with their musical talents. We have fifth grade music program and graduation coming up on Thursday, June 1st at 1.30 here in the auditorium. Our fifth graders um, are participating in various opportunities and Principal um, Orline and his crew are putting together some great opportunities to help with the transition for our fifth graders next year. We've got orientation coming up this week. Uh, we've got some different activities planned where they get to um, meet the middle school staff so that they have familiar faces when they return in the fall. Um, I want to recognize, I know it's been on school board minutes um, previously, but take this opportunity to recognize our retirees from Painesville Elementary School. I know Superintendent Bullard mentioned they had over 100 years of service uh, between Mary Heinen, Joan Blanagan, and, and Deb Bankston, all our paras at the elementary. Um, who will be retiring at the end of this school year. Their years of service, knowledge, and love for students and learning will be missed. Um, a special retirement recognition will be held at the end of May. So please be looking for details and I'd like to formally invite all of um, the school board members to that as well. It's hard to believe uh, we're wrapping up the school year. Um, it's gone by extremely quick. I remember sitting in this, this seat uh, for my very first board meeting and here I am at, you know, mid-May already. Um, so we're wrapping things up. We've got field trips, field day coming up. We're working on class lists for next year, um, getting things fine-tuned, um, that master schedule. Uh, you know, you've heard Principal Orline talk about the master schedule and there's a lot of layers that go into that. Same thing at the elementary. And so really meeting with teams to find out what is best for students um, and what does that look like. Looking at uh, personnel changes, you know, with the hiring of kindergarten and, you know, sometimes you have that domino effect. And so we're working through those uh, changes and we'll continue um, solidifying that up. 
And then just, you know, taking some time to celebrate our end of the school year with different celebrations, different uh, school wide gatherings um, in honor of a great year. That's my report to you. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. As far as the information that was sent out to parents uh, on, uh, I guess, preparing for kindergarten, uh, just to get, get an idea of how many students or, or you know, who is looking at uh, enrolling their students there, how many went out? Because I remember there was a number that you had sent out. Yes. How many were actually returned based off of that? I'd have to go back and confirm that okay, number. Then. I know we sent out, was it roughly 70-ish? We got yeah. back 55-ish. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, so that was a, a nice return. Right. Um, and then we have had some trickle in. Okay. Since then. So then are a lot of it from that preschool side that, yeah. that are coming in? Okay, yep. Many of our Good. students are going from our preschool program to right. our okay. kindergarten program. Fabulous. Other <clears throat> questions? All right. Well, thank you. And uh, as we, yep, you guys can uh, catch the bus and head on back. As, you, as they filter out, let's just give them one more round of applause. Thank you, guys. You did great jobs. All right, um, and then with that, we'll invite up uh, Mr. Orline, our secondary school principal, for um, his update. All right, good afternoon. Different spot. I know. <laughs> throwing, it, throwing a little change in the change order. Uh, I would like to just echo what uh, Mrs. Akerson was talking about with uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. It's just the the um, the amount of respect that I have for them is just overwhelming because there there's so many things behind the scenes. You know, it's not just it's just not teaching a class. It's it's just dealing with the um, all the things that go along with it. The, Social issues, the you know the, the things that are that can be really difficult for our kids. Um, it is uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and um, I just I just really appreciate the the overall um, job that our teachers do, not just in the content area. So just really appreciate that. Appreciate um, Rachel for what she does in the nurse's office and and. Uh, you know, coming out of COVID and and the responsibilities that she had with that, and then and then continuing with uh, what she's doing with both buildings is. I am very appreciative. Um, so it is a, a busy time of the year for us. We have uh, there's just feels like there's something going on every day. Uh, we have our our um, athletics going on um, that Mr. Hendrickson will talk about, but we just we just have a lot of other things that that um, we have to plan for. And a lot of it is what our seniors, you know, what, what the last few weeks of school is gonna be for our seniors. And then uh, just celebrating, uh, you know, our other students in different ways. And so there's a lot of activities going on. Um, just a couple, uh, tomorrow is Ag Day at the elementary. Um, Natalie Uch and the FFA do a great job with, with organizing that. They work really hard at that and appreciate that. Um, again, May 11th, fifth grade is coming over. Uh, Jen Andrus and uh, Sad uh, put that on, and we just really appreciate all the planning that goes into it. We work in a, um, a track and field day with sixth grade and kind of make it a, a really cool um, opportunity for kids to, to come over and see what it's all about. Um, on May 19th, we have our dollars for scholars um, grab and go breakfast. This is a, a new event for us, and um, it's at uh, 730 uh, to 815 at Bug Beehive Resort. And so we, we have uh, working on getting everything 
set up and uh, Ben assures me that it's going to be an outstanding venue for us. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we, on May 21st, uh, which is a Sunday busy day, FFA banquet at one o'clock in the auditorium, we have baccalaureate at four and honors banquet at six. And, um, and then the next week on May 25th is the last day for seniors. And we, we, we start that day with uh, graduation practice and taking care of a few uh, housekeeping uh, items. Um, a few uh, fine arts events on May 15th, we have a band concert. May 22nd is the seventh and eighth grade choir concert. And then the, um, the choir goes over to the to the elementary and um, and the nursing homes in town. And those are scheduled uh, with three different dates coming up. Um, graduation in the pack. We are we're excited about it. We we have a pretty good uh, plan, a pretty good layout on on what things are going to look like, and we're getting things ordered and. And Jen and Cassandra do a lot of the, the laying out of what it's going to look like. So I, I just kind of am along for the ride with some of that. But I will get information to you uh, soon on on what that will look like for the board. Typically, the board will um, would be sitting up by the stage. And so I'll get that out to you. Um, we have uh, we're working on master schedule. Our, our students are registered for classes. Um, and uh, I just want to mention Jay Thompson, who is retiring this year uh, from our science department, and he he helped uh, you know get robotics started and golf coach and just a number of different things over the years. We are uh, planning a um, uh, a celebration for him, and uh, I'll let you know when that is so that you can attend if possible. Any questions for me? Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hendrickson, can we see what's going on with activities? Yeah. Right. So last one I missed because I was, uh, was April 11th, right? When uh, track and field was at St. Cloud State. That was a lot of fun to watch them compete and our athletes and coaches were everywhere. That was a lot of fun. Uh, so we're a little over halfway, probably about two thirds of the way through our spring seasons right now, and it's uh, fun to see our athletes competing again. Spring season, like Mr. Orline said, means it's concert time. We just had a choir concert <coughs> last night, so Ben and Taylor did an outstanding job last night, as does uh, Mrs. Bungham with our group. We had a talented group. It was really fun to listen to them sing and perform. And we also have that 6 to 12 grand, uh, band concert on the 15th and 6 to 8th grade choir on the 22nd. So since our last board meeting, I went through and counted how many events that have been either canceled, postponed, uh, had the date changed due to weather that current day, or we looked at the forecast and had to bump it up a day or move it back a day. We had to look at umpires, we had to look at transportation and much, much more. And we had 23 different events that were changed in the last month. So it's been a lot of changing, communicating, trying to line up umpires, trying to cancel umpires, trying to line up workers, cancel those workers, line them up again. Uh, I know some other schools have actually been borrowing our bus company on days where we don't have all of our buses in use. Our, our, transport, our transportation has been used by other schools. So it's uh, been a crazy spring, obviously. So just lots going on and a lot of updates with our online schedule. So again, I really uh, appreciate all the patience and understanding with people and the ever-changing schedules that we've had. It's hard to believe that sections are actually going to be starting up here in a couple of weeks at the end of May. Um, so it's been tough to try to squeeze. Uh, basically, a, what spring sports try to do is they try to have a seven week outdoor season. Well, it's basically being crunched down into about four and a half. So now we're playing games on Saturdays, Wednesdays, uh, a lot of double headers. So it's been it's been crazy. And it's uh, been a, a challenge for everyone, but uh, thankfully we're making it through so far okay. Uh, weather looks good outside right now, but we also have a 70% chance of rain over New London today for our baseball game. So who knows what's gonna happen there in a couple of hours. So again, check the online schedule, check our Facebook page, our Twitter account. Miranda does a great job of getting updates out pretty much instantly whenever anything changes. So 
been crazy, but I really appreciate, you know, umpiring is basically a thankless job, but I really appreciate all the efforts that our umpires put in. And sometimes with the changing schedules, like I've said, they don't get notified until less than 24 hours before. Uh, Ken has umpired some for us. Tim Patron has umpired a lot. Kylie Everson, Bryce Savage, Garrett Lusing, Chad Campbell. And I hope I'm not missing anybody else in there, but uh, really appreciate all their, their work to go in there and, uh, you know, give back to our kids too. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun to go out there and, and watch them perform too. So, yeah, okay. any questions? This has to be a record, huh, as far as uh, pushback. I mean, obviously, I mean, we don't know the answer, but I, um, I, I got to give you credit. Longest tenured you know. AD in our conference said that this is the worst that he has seen. So, and we have two new ADs this year and three new ones next year. As a, ACGC is getting a new one, Royalton and Eden Valley are all getting new ADs next year. So, yeah, but hopefully that means we're good for another 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> Else? All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll invite um, Chris O'Brien. Um, come on up and let us know what's happening in Community Education. Hello. So, yeah, we have a lot going on too. It's summer is coming. It actually feels like it now, so that's good. Um, so I'll start with the pack. I'm just going to do a, a, as the weather gets nicer, the gyms are less used. And uh, so we're looking at moving to our summer hours. So they haven't been posted yet, but we're looking at Monday through Thursday. We're going to do 8 to 7 p.m. This is open to the public. Um, Fridays, 8 to 4. And then Saturdays and Sundays will stay the same. they will be 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then 2 to 6. We're hoping to get some time to do some deep cleaning over the summer with people with the less usage in the in the space. We're also talking about some daily uh, new rates uh, for for daily rates um, and making some additional memberships for youth and um, and adding some punch cards so we can just have, drum up our membership and and. Um, promote usage of the pack when it when it is during its busy times. Um, big events coming up. You already heard about graduation. We have a Just for Kicks event this weekend, but that's also tapering off. So I think it's uh, a welcome thing for the custodians too, because they put in a lot of extra hours during that time. Um, for Community Ed, our program went out uh, April 26th. Our registrations have been pretty steady. Um, we sports and rec are are the big ones. There's uh, a lot of participation and a lot of registrations in that area. Some of our new programs, our new enrichment programs, are um, are coming. Our people are registering for them, and and they're. Um, I'm hopeful we'll be able to run a majority of them. Um, the uh, I know that we have gotten a few. Uh, positive feedbacks from community members on the, the variety of programs that we have going on for this summer. So I'm, I'm um, liking that a lot. Our summer pause program, we have 84 contracts. We have, um, uh, we are going to be at the elementary school. So we took a look at the possibility of having some transportation. because that's kind of a barrier for some of our families for being able to register for classes and then be able to get here for like gymnastics, swimming lessons, even the basketball camps. So we are, uh, we're working on um, just kind of running a school van back and forth and, and getting kids from point A to point B. Um, our new registration program will be finishing up this summer with the final training. We'll be launching the full program with, with facilities and then you'll be able to sign up for your classes using that program. So. We're, we're getting our final trainings and we'll be using that program um, full time starting in the fall. Uh, Thursday on May 4th, we had touch a truck night. We had close to 100 people in attendance, lots of little people, about 15 trucks. Uh, we had food, our food service provided uh, hot dogs, chips, cookie. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. A lot of those little it's always fun to watch those little people come running around and then the truck, they see one of the trucks and they just freeze and stare at it. They're, 
It was very fun. We had kids climbing on things, beeping horns, moving cranes up and down, and a few of the dads jumped on those trucks too. So it's not just for the kids. <laughs> so um, it was it was fun, and we'll um, be talking about doing more fun family nights for for our for our community. Uh, so let's see. We will be talking about the pro our, our playground later. So I'll save that. And some community connection things. I'm um, working with the uh, community foundation. Um, Randy's trying to put together some coffee and conversation type of um, opportunities where there'll be a lot of community stakeholders so we can talk about what's going on in our programs and who's doing what and how can we help each other. And it might be around youth development, it might be around a community event or just future growth of the community. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being a part of that program. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, um, traditionally community ed has had a membership with the Chamber of Commerce. And so I've been talking to them about how can the school be more involved in uh, that membership. And so we are, um, I've been talking to them about changing it transferring it to have the school district's name on it. Because community is a department of the school district. And we have two schools and there's multiple departments in each of our schools. And um, it got some, we got some really good conversation and especially around, um, you know, the chamber saying, how can we be, uh, how can we help the school? So maybe if we get more involvement from, um, what's happening in the school, we will know how to, you know, better support that. So, you know, maybe it's through the CTE program, how can, and we have a number of businesses that are similar to that, how can they help support or vice versa? So we just felt like this might be to just get, change it over. Uh, um, I attend every, all their meetings, Janelle will come, you know, quarterly or whenever it's appropriate and come and make a school district update, but that's, that's kind of happening in the, that's what's happening in the chamber piece of that. And then uh, April 22nd, we had the talent show. The Arts Council was, it, uh, sponsored it. And it was, uh, I think it was well attended. It was a normal attendance that they, that they normally get for that event. And those proceeds we hang on to for them uh, for when they want to do improvements in the auditorium. So it's their fundraiser. And then finally, we have our July summer concert series. So uh, those are on Thursdays in July. We have um, we have four sponsors, um, Magnify Perennial, Great Rivers Library, and Painesville Area Cha uh, Chamber of Commerce, and also the City of Painesville because they provide the space. So you know, there's a number of us all working together to make this to make it happen. Um, so hopefully we have great weather on Thursday nights. <laughs> oh, the Green Roof area will be supplying the food. Green Roof and Rose, they will take turns and we'll be posting the menu if you're interested to find out what's for dinner when you, on Thursday nights. So we'll have a full fun summer and we'll be busy at our office. So looking forward to it. Any questions? Have you had much feedback on the LEO program yet as far as utilization for families? Yes, actually, the families are starting to figure out that they can have control of their schedule and um, don't have to submit these. It's not paper, but it, you know, they basically a calendar and then we put it and our staff puts it on and then it changes and then we do it again. And our staff's been, you know, you can go into your account and you can change it. And, and it has been, I think, certainly if we, the negative feedback, we don't hear that. So when you don't hear that, I feel like it must be going fine. So until somebody <laughs> says something, <laughs> but uh, the, I think then when our catalog came out, they were able to say, okay, good. Now I don't need childcare here because I signed up for this class or I went to this camp and they're able to fix and change their accounts. And they have, you know, they can change it up to two weeks prior. You know, so they have a, you know, they have a pretty good leeway until, until then. So I think it will be, um, this pick a day is different. And um, so I think we'll all have a better idea of comparing it to last year's or last summer and see what the 
participation level was. So. I see. Uh, you know, from my perspective, I obviously jumped on it a little early and got to play around with it. Um, I absolutely love it so far. Um, I've had a few family members that are family members, families in the area that I know that were like, what is this? How do I do this? I said, just take your time, jump on there. I said, once you're, once you're on it, you'll, and I've got a lot of positive feedback good. from families on that front that after they've got signed up, it's been good. And, and then from, again, my experience, I, I messed up. I submitted my pause. I don't know if Carrie told you that, but I submitted my pause for my kids for the summer. And I went back and said, oh no, I just did the wrong dates. I was supposed to do Tuesday through, through Thursdays, not Mondays and Fridays, and I had backwards. And so it was really simple. I went back on, I canceled it, I resubmitted it, yep. did it within minutes on my phone, yep. and it was just done. So it's yes. it's been a good program, yeah. um, and I'm excited for the good. for the fall activities you, to be. You, yeah, when we can put there. those on there. And once you've made your account, so not that I want you to go over to Melrose or Wilmer, yeah. but those accounts follow you. So you can, if we, if we have something that, you know, there's something over there that we don't have, you can use your account to sign that, sign up at another district. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. That's kind of, it is really, that is a really nice feature. Yep. So anyway, great. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Hey. Okay, and then before we hear from our secondary students, we'll invite Ken Ozendorf up to hear what's happening um, with our buildings and grounds. So, good thing spring is here, right? It's working to run away everything. Lawn is slow to come, but the weeds sure are. <laughs> They're coming in full force. Anyway, upgrade uh, the light football lights. Met with, uh, well, I've, I've called Wilmer there. Uh, I'm very impatient. I come to fixing stuff, but I'm figuring out maybe I need to be more patient because they are slow on returning calls and emails and stuff. But uh, design was out trying to find the, the actual spot to see if we wanted to just fix it. And it is underneath, he's almost positive it is underneath the parking lot. So it's probably not a good option for us to go that route, but uh, so he could not actually find it because he figured it was there. Um, did uh, talk with uh, the city on the oh water leak. That was the next one. So we've been turning on water for the players out on the field, so on and so forth. And uh, hasn't been a good year for Ken on that. Turned it on, and underneath the bleachers, we got water just pouring out. So the curb stop, either something went wrong with the curb stop that it did not drain back, but the uh, looks like the pipe, the water was coming up at least five feet back and it's under the bleachers, underneath concrete. So we got some decisions to make. We found that out early this week. So it's like, oh, so um, uh, we did, it is definitely a pipe. We did clean out the, where the water meter goes and found the crack. Upgrades on the tennis courts. So I had Marla Sorensen contact me with a really nice uh, letter sent it to me. Um, and I contacted her back and she is willing to help out with that whole deal. So I'm kind of waiting, I'm gonna meet with her, I believe on Thursday, I've got it on schedule on my calendar. Uh, and I'll let you know how, what uh, she brings to the table on that whole deal. I've been kind of thinking about that whole process out there and you know, the trees and everything else, how we want to go. And uh, this will actually be a help maybe with the money wise and every, maybe she's got contacts as well. And I think she was in the school district, if yeah, I remember correctly. Marlis has been part of the discussion with Dee as well. Oh, so, okay. So there was about four or five of them um, that I have been meeting with over the course of years. So awesome. let's make sure we touch base too um, okay. around that. Yep. Oh, perfect. Yep. Yes, we'll do. So, um, the costs and stuff. Uh, student center, I did finally get all the rest of the material for Mr. Kapsner and uh, that is coming around really nicely. He's just got a few trim boards left and he told me today that uh, by the end of the week that should be all completed. So that'll be a nice feeling to have that done finally and the students don't have to look at a bare wall. So on and so forth. Uh, so just to, to bring the board up to speed, what when Ken kind of came through and walked, <clears throat> walked through the building, he saw some details that were um, not that were not finished. They were pieces that were just kind of sitting um, unaccounted for. Um, one of those was in the student center. There were a couple of um, pieces of trim that hadn't been finished and completed. And uh, so that's what he's talking about. He and you know it's one of the things that I think is really nice when you bring in a new set of eyes is they see things that when we walk the space all the time, 
we don't always see them anymore. And so it was that that's what the student center update is. Oh. Um, haven't done anything with door fours. I just know they're in tough shape, but I do have to put a piece of trim back on one of the doors that has fallen off now and anchor that somehow in aluminum. So we'll figure that out. But, uh, um, I did contact with the city on the, the sewer and getting that started anytime. And they, as soon as boss is ready, they're going to come in and start that whole process. And talked with Dave, made sure it was okay that they get started as long as they fence it off decent and night and stuff. So. And then uh, um, Cassie came to me with uh, the playground at the elementary school, putting more chips down. So it's actually becoming very unsafe. I do have two people working on quotes. I uh, had a flyer that was left on my desk, and I think Dave maybe gave me one, or maybe he did. And then I actually did contact Roto Chopper to see if they had anybody in mind, and he gave me another person. So I did a. Uh, I uh, reached out to them guys as well to get comfortable with, uh, on that. If anybody else knows of anybody with playground safe mulch, I'm happy to entertain you and <laughs> look into it. So with that, uh, any then, other questions? The one piece that I'll maybe add to that is so that if people are watching, um, it's not we can't just go buy like mulch from the from the lawn center to put underneath the playground. There's a very specific um, specifications that the mulch has to have, which is kind of like a, essentially like an impact resistance so that if kids fall off the playground equipment, it, it it's almost like padding so that there, it, it's a, an injury you reduction. Walk it, it is very so, actually soft. Yep. Yeah. So there's, um, that's why it is, it's, it's not like we can just call up to the garden center and say, Hey, hook us up with a bunch of mulch. So that's why it's, there's very specific specifications to that. This is specific for schools, correct? For playgrounds. playgrounds. Yep, for playgrounds. Yep. Especially if there's underage kids, I, I think there was a age limit on it for mostly. Obviously, we would make that age limit. So, any other questions? Um, I'm working with Tim from the Minnesota Wisconsin playground for the preschool one, and I know they have uh, mulch and surface options, so I can get you. Yeah, if you just send me that, that would be great. I'll look in. I think that's the same person I contacted for that equipment that was broken. Oh, from the elementary playground? Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. You. All right. Uh, should I move on? Yep. Okay. Um, Next I item yep. is Mr. Orline. Do you want to introduce yeah. what we've got going for our secondary student presentation? So um, <laughs> we have a, a couple of activities that we just want to touch base on a little bit. Um, I'm going to have Emily Nelson come up here and she's going to go first. And she's going to just talk a little bit about the mock car crash that we had um, and kind of some of the coordination and the things that went along with that. If you if you saw it anywhere online or were there live, it's quite a moving production. and. Um, was really impactful. So I just wanted to give her a few minutes to talk a little bit about that. Hi, welcome. So my name is Emily Nelson, I'm the junior. Um, I was the head chairman of the Mock Cart Crash and I'm the vice president of SAD, which is Students Against Destructive Decisions. We're also putting on the fifth grade orientation, walkover in the eighth grade orientation. So um, the 2023 Mock Car Crash, I wanted to illustrate distracted driving. This stuff happens every day. The students did a Jeopardy game on Tuesday, the day previous. Um, it was during connect time and we had the advisors play it with the students and they learned one of the main points that we wanted to have the students learn was um, only it takes three seconds to become distracted and get into a car accident. So from that, we went on to the planning. So for this to only happen every four years, it was a big role to take on to. I didn't know that it was gonna be this much work, but it came out good. Um, during the planning stages, we started with only doing Wednesdays for like rep meetings and large group meetings was sad. And from there, we kind of got our ideas out and earned down. We felt that distracted driving was more prone now with our age of kids driving in high school. And that happens more than under the influence. After that, we kind of realized that Wednesdays weren't enough to start planning. So we had to add Mondays and Tuesdays every week to start planning additionally. Um, I had to reach out to everyone personally outside of school and to connect with them. 
Um, I believe they're kind of getting annoyed with all my emails. I sent probably 30 of them out within a month. Um, so with that, we had Lights and Sound, which was Sarah Meyer, Maggie Gutwald, and a few others. Um, we had a lot of departments come out, which we had St. Martin come out, Lake Henry come out, the EMT and LifeLink. We did get LifeLink to land, thanks to Steve Stain. Um, we had other people involved, like makeup and actress prep, which was Dave Schutz. He did the moulage for the girls participating in the mock car crash. We had Grant Leeser from Yarman Ford come out, and he was the one that placed vehicles in the parking lot and got them staged for us. From Johnson's Funeral Home, we had Steve and Gerald. And then we had the Painsville Police, which was Paul Wagner and Logan Eck. Then we had Painsville Fire and Rescue. Then we had Parking Lot Prep, which was Ken and Grant Leeser, and then we had City of Painsville come and sweep for us. So the helicopter could land. From the Pansel School side, we had David, Jesse, Miranda, and Jen help us kind of send and get stuff to the other people. And we had Mike come from the press, and then we had a few sponsors, Yarman Ford, Firehouse, and then during the Q&A questions, which I'll get into later, but they had us um, hand out little coupons where they asked questions of the first responders. So we had a few meetings. We had two meetings in April leading up with the with the main people with the mock car crash. So there we finalized our decisions and we got our main points adjusted and we were able to work with the fire department to see what they could do. Usually these happened on Friday, but due to prom this year and we wanted to make sure everyone was there, they weren't away on appointments or other school activities. So we wanted on Wednesday, which it worked out great. Um, Andy Swaney, the fire chief, actually liked it on Wednesday. It was more, it was easier for them because of they always have meetings every Monday for fire and rescue. So planning on Monday and being on there on Wednesday, the the crew knew what they were doing. So we had the sad reps, Andres, Paul, and Logan. Grant, Steve, the EMT garage, um, Steve from the Johnson Funeral Home, Orlin Raspin, and Dave was on through text. They were the ones that came to every Tuesday's meetings. We also had the girls come on the last Tuesday meeting to go over their roles. Over the overall, the planning process was really well. I was very impressed with the great communication that everyone came through. It made the job way easier. So now going to the morning of, which was April 26th, we had a busy morning. Myself and a few other staff members handed out lifesavers with a quote that stated, don't text and drive, let's save some lives. The students did seem very involved and were truthful with if they did text and drive, which we did give them a little warning saying, let's not do that next, next time. Um, the morning did go really fast. Um, we were really nervous. We all were. We were just, it was a lot of preparation. We wanted to execute this as well as we could. So following that, we met with Grant Leeser when he dropped off the vehicles and placed them in the parking lot. And then we started doing test mic. We started doing testing for the mics in the vehicles so the student body could hear us from the yard they were standing in. Well, we're just putting the last touches on the planning aspect. Um, I had the girls sit down and we talked about the seriousness of the topic and how this will make a huge difference within the school and the, and the students' futures. Um, the girls were excited, but I could tell that they weren't truly like in the head zone yet. So I just wanted them to sit down and actually communicate with each other saying like, like, what are you nervous about? Like, what are you like, ready for? Like, are you still wanting to do this? Okay. so. We kind of just went over that, which by then the girls were like, okay, let's do this. And we watched previous years of the videos that were posted on the Painsville YouTube page. So when jumping to 1130, we had the girls get their new lodge done by Dave. And then by 1 p.m. they were in the vehicles. We did have a little mess up with the overcom speakers with the 911 ditch batch call with Paul Wagner and Maggie Gutwald. It only went to the middle school, but we did want it to go to the high school as well, but that just didn't happen, which is totally fine because we still got all the student body out there to watch. And then from there, we um, kind of let the girls take over. It was out of my hands and it was in the first responders' hands. So I felt 
almost, I started crying. I was so nervous. I was just like, let's just get this done. So it went really well though. And then with that being said, it was 40 minutes long. The video is still being edited. That's so much video to go through. So I will kind of contact that with Mr. Wolf and then have him possibly post that on the Pansel YouTube page. So then after that, following MCC, we had the students go to the auditorium and I said a short thank you and described what the MCC was about, which was distracted driving. Distracted driving is a major issue. A lot of people drive distracted. Approximately 660,000 people in the US drive on their phones per day. It's not also just distracted driving, but under the influence as well. Describe that to the students. And then following that, we had Jackie Osterhaus to um, come on the stage and talk about her daughter's experience. Um, she, her daughter graduated around 10 years ago. She had an accident and now she's in a wheelchair. Um, that video will be up on the YouTube page too if you guys want to listen to her speech. It was very well done. And then after that, we had Fortress come out, which we've never had Fortress come out until this year. Andrews kind of wanted some speakers to come in and I didn't know how to contact them. I just I just let her do that. So she got um, Chris, Matt, and Jeremy to talk about their experiences. If you guys were there, they did a really well explaining how it was their perspective of being the distracted or under influence driver and showing the students like how detrimental that could be to somebody's life. So I thought they did really well. I hope to have them uh, the following four years. And then lastly, we had all the first responders and actresses come up on the stage and the students asked us questions about the planning process, how it is to, to respond to these um, accidents and how it is to be a firefighter, or EMS or a police officer. So yeah, that's it. You guys have any questions? Yeah, well, and maybe you mentioned it. Uh, when did you start this plan? How, how many Beginning months of back? End of March. Okay. So we've got two months of planning. <clears throat> And I think I added up, I think it was like 26 meetings we had. Okay. So that's almost, that's a lot of, that's a lot of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, you guys. Yeah. Great, Great job. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Okay, so the next uh, pair we have up here um, that I want to introduce is uh, Taylor Beerworth and Ben Bobby, and they both participated <laughs> in the state speech meet. And I just I thought it would be kind of cool to to have them talk about the the process and how they qualified and and what it looks like the day of um, of the state meet and and how they have time to prepare and and how impromptu the whole thing really is. And so uh, Ben talk, Ben promised it would be a half hour or less. <laughs> That's right. Uh, David, will you, uh, will you slide that up so that they can both have yeah, yeah, okay, sure. yeah, And I'll just take that one. Yeah, there Thank you. Go. You. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Very nice. Well, um, I'll start if that's all right. First and foremost, it's lovely to be with you all here this afternoon. So what a deal. Who needs to take a math test, right? <laughs> but uh, so, well, this is my probably my sixth year in, uh, in competitive speech, which has been delightful. Uh, I've stayed in the same category for, for that entire ride. And I hopefully Taylor will tell you a little bit about her category, but I'll just jump in and give you a brief explanation. So there's, there's a multitude of different categories within, uh, within speech. So there's dramatic dealios and all, all sorts of fun. But uh, I focused on extemporaneous speaking, which is really a uh, dive into domestic and international issues that are challenging the world and the world around us. And so we're given topics, three topics, and we choose one. We have a half an hour to write about a seven-minute long speech, polish it, and then present it. And we do that three to four times a day at each speech meet. So it's been a fun evolution of how uh, of how that has gone. So that's really been delightful to see. My own progression, and then 
Taylor's really just skyrocketed in the last two years here, and I'll let her tell you a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's my second year in speech, and I've also stayed in my own category both years, which is prose interpretation. This is basically a presentation of an excerpt from a piece of literature that isn't poetry. I chose that because I like, you know, I'm an avid reader and I wanted to expand on that passion. But it's just been, it's a, been a really great experience being in speech. And I'm very happy to have made it to the state meet my second year in speech. And I hope to continue on this path in my future years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll just mention, it's just nice. This is my third time at state. And uh, being there, it's, it's full of excitement and full of a lot of, uh, a lot of different people. And in my category, full of a lot of, a lot of cocky people. So we're all sort of walking around like it's a, you know, the, the elites only club in our extemp room. It's, you know, you don't get to come in. This is extemp speaking only, which is sort of funny. But uh, anyway, so no, it's a, it's a fun, fun deal to get to that point. But boy, is there ever some competition. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting because we, we really get to have our niche here with the same people, the same towns and the same style of competition. And boy, when you get to state, you're playing with the big boys. And uh, it's really impressive to watch some of the others speak. And uh, I was thrilled to make it to the final round. Again, we do three, uh, three preliminary rounds. And then at, from that point on, uh, they have this big sort of, well, they've got two massive screens that they display. This is in the city, so they've got these huge cafeterias. And everybody's just swarming around these screens. And when one of the categories comes up, you just hear an eruption of, Whoa! you know, I mean, it's just sort of fun. But uh, a lot of excitement around that. And uh, making it to the final finals this year was really delightful. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, what would you like to know? We're, we're happy to share. We didn't put together a lovely presentation like Emily did. But, uh, so when you uh, give your speeches at state. Yes. The, the judges are there. Kind of give us a picture of what, are you in a room? Are audience members allowed to come in? How, how does that all work? Yeah, we'll tell you. Well, for my category, I don't know. I'm sure it's pretty similar for both of our categories, but each round for the preliminary rounds, there's one judge and the other people you're competing against, which is around, for state, it's five other people in your category that you're competing in that room against. And then, for, since it was at state, many family members of other people came to watch. So it was very full rooms. You got to perform in front of way more people than you usually mm -hmm. do, which was, it was kind of nice, actually, getting to see the reactions of different um, people that usually you usually don't see. Um, so then final rounds, I'm not sure how it looks for state, but what would you say it's like? Yeah, well, so again, I'm very similar in extent speaking for the preliminary rounds. So again, we draw, it's a, it's a draw category is what they call it, because I have no clue what I'm going to be speaking on. I mean, I know it's current, current events, current topics, but I'm never exactly sure what, what type of issues we'll be discussing. Uh, and with that, we have certain draw times. So once we've drawn, we've got that 30 minutes of preparation and we present, and then we sit down and watch the rest of the speakers. So every 30, well, I shouldn't say that, every 10 minutes or so, we have different speakers coming into the room. So it's not as, not as though everybody's sitting and watching everybody's speech. It's an evolution of people coming in and out of the room. But, uh, but definitely a lot more folks than we normally have, at least in my category. Uh, our typical meets were in a closet because there's not as many people in our category. They just can't handle it, but uh, no. But uh, so we're in a smaller room and there's only a few, a few folks. Uh, here it was, again, you've got some parents, you've got some other people that are just attending state to watch the competition because it is that higher level. People sort of want to learn from that. And um, so it's a little bit more packed. But, uh, and then the final rounds, it is, it's the same thing, except you really got a big room because those that don't final typically will stay and watch their category and the final final eight people that go on there. So, yeah, absolutely. What other questions do we have? Yeah. So, so Benny, if you've been in this category and it's uh, extemporary uh, speaking, I, I take it you kind of put yourself, uh, the, as far as in a mindset of, I know how then to put something together. So you like work, work on a pro and con? Is that how you present it? Do you just take something that you're given and then you only uh, stay on the positive side and try to pitch that side 
uh, or vice versa? I, how, how do you lay that out for yourself? Yeah, it's a great question, and that is that's been the fun thing is over the years it's definitely shifted. Okay. I, uh, I used to start my speech with a quote, and I thought, oh, that's sort of fun. No, it is not. That's not a good idea. But uh, normally we start with a little attention grabber, and I know Taylor has a pre-written one, but I just sort of come up with one right when I'm reading over my questions. That's almost how I determine. I'm like, oh, I can. I can think of something I can start my speech with, with this certain topic. So, for instance, one of my topics this year was, is the Federal Reserve still a, uh, a good national economic regulator? And so my answer was, yes, it is. And so I sort of lay out this introduction. Somehow I compare it to that, bring it to that point. And then I say, which begs the necessary question, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, and the answer is a strong blank and then I say to prove this we'll be looking to prove my reasoning we'll be discussing three main points bam bam and bam so we go through that uh, and then we do in summary state the topic again go over those three points I always try to keep it to three points again seven minutes is my cap mm -hmm. and um, and from that point I work into a conclusion that I like to tie in with the beginning of my speech and so again it's a different topic every time but I have the same model, I'll call it, and that's sort of what you're asking there. So that the topic varies, the introduction always varies, uh, but the model stays very similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you more nervous for your topic or staying seven minutes or less? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> well, goodness gracious. Yeah. Well, I, you, I, I, I have some similar traits to you, uh, oh, yeah. you know, in, in over speaking, I think, sometimes. And, <laughs> And when no, I put when I put on a clock, it's not it's not my favorite time thing to be because yeah. No, well, I'll, I'll tell you. Normally, it's I've got I've got it down to okay. I know where I'm at, and it's nice they give in the room, and I'm pretty sure they do this for you as well. They give time signals, so you know where you're at. Well, at five minutes they give you the two, at one minute they give you the one, and at thirty seconds they do a fist. And I always like to tell them, well, when I get to seven minutes, start standing up and waving, but they don't like that. But uh, anyway, so. At the state competition, they were really dicey topics at the end, and I was I was shocked at the final round. They're like, "Well, if you're this is the best in the state, we're going to give you challenging topics." And holy moly, was it ever! But uh, with that, I was trying to get work through the speech, and I got to my conclusion statement, and I hit that seven minute marker. So I had to sort of abruptly stop because once you hit that seven minutes, you're done or you're disqualified. And so that was disappointing for me because I, my conclusion wasn't as strong, and that's, I don't know, that's a pretty big detractor. But, um, but no, you just try to, again, for me, it's you have that three, three points, and I sort of know just in my head from doing it so many times, I know how long I can give each of my points. You sort of put a strong one in the top, weaker one in the middle, and then a stronger one at the end, and that's... You know, you present it in that fashion. People don't remember the second point. They remember the top two. Like, oh, that was decent enough. And great. Next speech. So, but yeah. And then Taylor, Taylor is 10 minutes yep. each speech. 10 minutes. And it's very different from yours. Really? I do not have to prepare a new speech every time. I don't think I'd be able to do that. But no, I just memorize at the beginning of the season. I get my 10 minute speech memorized. I usually pick that out this year. It was around four months before the season actually started so I could actually start preparing for it and starting the season strong and getting everything just prepared and ready for that. But yeah, same speech every time, four times a day. It can get a bit tiring. And Plus she has to listen to the same group of people yep. every time. Oh boy, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was your topic? Just It um, wasn't Federal Reserve, I'm sure yeah. it wasn't that. No. It's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm in a dramatic um, category, which means I mainly focus on acting and theatrical pre presentation. So I basically chose a part of my favorite book that I think would be good for me to act out and present and really tell a story with my speech. So yeah, it was just um, a really to just display emotions, what I can do as an actor and what I am capable of doing in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sounded like you had a question in the back there. No, 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 no. Yeah, very good. All and right, well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you to our, our student representative. It's just good to hear, 
you know, some behind the scene uh, things that that go on and the responsibilities that our that our students take on and and Emily with the mock car crash and all the, the nuances with that and and uh, I was actually just talking to uh, David Smala as a speech coach and he has just been doing a wonderful job and been very successful and I asked him what it was like and he was kind of describing it and I it was just fascinating and and uh, thanks for thanks for sharing all that information. Thanks for having us. All right. Um, and with that, we'll invite uh, Lisa Stang up. And um, so, um, and, and Chris, do you want to um, launch any of that discussion as well, or should we just turn it right over to Lisa? Uh, we could, yeah. We can just sit there. I mean, it's no. Yeah. Um, so if you need to see it, you can certainly stand or you can. If I could stand with a little bit. And I'll bit just of, stay back here. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Is that a requirement? No, yeah. no, no. I'll just um, cast it so that um, people can see what we're talking about. And then. Um, so a couple years ago, um, right after COVID, I got this crazy idea to have an early childhood playground right outside of our door. Um, the elementary playground is great, but when I bring in these ECFE families at night with these twos and threes, it's a little bit intimidating for those parents to bring them out to the big playground. So I got this wild idea to start the process of fundraising for uh, an early childhood playground, which would suit kids um, birth to five, um, right outside the preschool doors. Um, so if you can go ahead and click it, um, this would meet that age requirement for zero to five. Um, a big portion of this playground will be um, have that um, surface material called port in place, um, which would be handicap accessible, which would um, meet those needs of some of our students, but also some generations that come and bring their kids to the playground as well. When grandma and grandpa bring them, if they need a little bit more cushion when they walk um, or anyone like that, it'll be used for preschool students only during the school day evening and summer, it will be completely open to families and the public. Um, it'll be located right outside of Ms. Kestelut and I's classroom doors. Um, and I talked to Ken and I had a little meeting already about getting those fob, um, those doors, because right now they're not entrances, they're just exits. Um, also, uh, the retired teachers uh, organization, I guess you could call it that, um, already donated a bench in memory of one of our teachers that has passed. So uh, it's getting the word out and we're really starting to push it now. Um, go ahead and click it. This is uh, the vision. If you look at it, so they don't have a door there, but this would be uh, my classroom door and then Ms. Kestelitz would be right next door. Um, so. That would be part of it, and you can go ahead and click another one. This, is, I guess, is a better one. Um, we'll be removing this tree and sliding these swing sets over just so we can have better access of vision for the whole thing. And then on this side will be just a grass area, kick a ball, a roll around in the grass. Um, this is the library door over there. Get a feel for what that would look like. Um, so you go ahead and click it again. This is the overhead view. Um, I think I have a better picture of the fencing if we want to keep it going. Oh, we're going to go to the total. So the equipment themselves uh, runs about 62,000. Um, what the big chunk of this playground is going to go towards is that port in place. Um, we could go with the mulch, um, but with having toddlers out there, you know where that's going to go. Um, so we decided to go big because we're not going home. So we went with the port in place where you can see just that alone is 113,000. That's with the idea that we're going to get community help when it comes that day to building it. Um, it's called a community build um, where we do the um, get the ground ready for it. Um, and we have uh, an excavating company, whoever come in and dads and uncles and moms and, and aunts come in um, and that will save us a lot of money if we they send a foreman out here um, to con, to run it all but we do the manual labor and that will save us um, a lot of money but with that you can see the grand total up there um, so it, it's a big chunk of change so 
I think there might be one more. If you're not sure what that cord in place looked like, I threw some pictures in there um, of some from other schools. We're, we're, we're still putting together final budgets. So she just showed you those two pieces. There's the keying the doors, uh, the, fencing. The, the fencing. So we're, we're still putting together some of that, like this is what it looks like. And then um, we are um, also gathering that where all the revenue is and where potential revenue will come uh, come from, and then I'll, uh, we'll manage that in community ed, manage that budget, and um, and so we can keep track of our donors, uh, you know, versus a grant. So so we have um, Lisa's put together uh, committees, a bigger group, and we've split things up. And so we have some people looking at grant opportunities. Um, so in order to write grants, we have to have the full budget done and how much revenues we have. And mm -hmm. if we're going to do that community build, there's an in-kind contribution that a lot of grants are looking for to be able to say, what are you doing to help with this? Like, yeah. where, where is that coming from? So we're still finishing that up. And I know she's going to, we're, our goal is to make it to the chamber meeting at the end of the month with uh, with a lot of it done and ready to say, you know, to see what they think and and then start to present that to our local businesses. So I think um, there's one. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think another circuit to hit um, as we, as this is finalized and you kind of know, like, this is um, how we're going to strategize all the costing um, would be to hit some of our local community um, you know, our community organizations. Yep. Yeah. Um, is your next slide on our levels? We're going to find out. Oh, oh no, no, there's your fence. There's this is fence. a fence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it will obviously be fenced in for safety reasons. Um, we're going to try to incorporate the fencing into a donation opportunity um, for families to purchase a fence post, get their name. Um, engraved or grandkids name or whatever they want on it. Okay. Um, yep. And Rachel, if you wanted to pull that up, that would be uh, the Innovation Center did that for us. Cool. The engraving. Nice. The engraving. Yeah. Yep. So cool. Yeah. We're working with Fort Fort and Avon Plastics to make that happen and to see what the cost of that is, which then we would know what we would um, make that a fundraising opportunity, what level that would be at to make a profit off it. Uh, but that's where the fencing would go. Would go. Um, I didn't have the levels on there. We weren't sure if they were. Yeah. Well, we're set in place. Yeah. So we're working on a couple of different ways to support. One is your traditional uh, bronze, silver, or bronze, silver, gold, platinum levels that can be, you know, certain um, pay levels, and then where they land on a marquee sign. Um, one other uh, would be the fence posting. So if you wanted to, as an individual, donate a, you know, let's say it's $200 and then you could have your name or you could someone's name on there. Um, we are looking at the possibility of adopting a piece of equipment. Um, that that could be a possibility as to how you, uh, how you might wanna be involved and then um, they have some events that they have, they have a fall festival or I, do you call it the fall festival or fall fundraising yeah. event? Yeah. So there's a couple events that they do uh, as well that the proceeds go towards um, this project. And then once this project is funded, we foresee keep doing those activities because there's always something else to add to it. We want to add, you know, planters boxes in those library windows to keep kids away from those windows. and a shed for all of our stuff. So hopefully once we get this funded, we keep that festival going just to keep keep up. Keep up too. Mm -hmm. Any questions for? So, so the budget that you put up there as far yeah. as what that, that full uh, dollar amount was, is that with or without the in-kind? Is it? That's just those two things that are okay. up there. Yeah, so the fence is not included. Right. Uh, I also put in a question mark installation. I wanted to know how much it would cost to professionally yeah. install it so that if we do a community install, 
that's my in kind. Like I know now how much my in kind is when I have all those helpers. So I'm able gotcha. to go to a grantor and say, because this is ten thousand dollars to install, I have a bunch of volunteers, so that's ten thousand dollars worth of work. Gotcha. So, okay. so we have a couple more, you know, um, pieces of information we need to put in there. So the overall budget is going to be much higher than that because. I'm, I want the professional installation in it so that yeah. we can, I, I want everything that it possibly would cost. And then if we, if the fencing gets donated or is at a reduced price, I can utilize that in a grant. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, I guess Ms. Stang, I, maybe it's a conflict, I guess I'm on the board, but I did reach out just to let you know. Um, to the, I'm on the Lake and Reliance Club, and I have not spoke with Painsville Alliance, but <clears throat> we had a, uh, a zoning meeting, and I spoke with our district governor regarding, <clears throat> there's a, a program through uh, Lions International where they have a, a matching program, and uh, it wouldn't be, you know, matching what another individual does, it would be matching what a Lions uh, club would do. And uh, I'm still, I'm glad that you have these numbers because I will be picking your brain because I'll need that to fill out a, a matching grant through uh, Lions International. I can't make any promises, but- That was I'm, on our radar. I'm the, yeah, I'm the type too yeah. that I don't let uh, a tree unturned, I guess, or a rock unturned. Uh, if, if we can get some money there, I, like to see us do that. And I'm on I'm in the Painesville lines as well, which is where I suggested once we have this all organized to I think go to those different organizations. I think um, you know, I think there are some different opportunities, but once you kind of know what that big dollar is, um yeah, then we, we can should. really approach to say these are these are what we know for donations, these are what we know for grants and yeah, it'd be great. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I know through Lions International I was told that uh, it's a little bit of a, at a snail's pace. So now that you have that information, then I can get on that. So I do have one question and my wife probably would be upset, upset for me by asking. Um, I noticed your map there. Couldn't we save the tree? <laughs> I have a question about that tree because that tree was donated for Chris, Chris Quayle. Oh, oh, it was a memory tree. Oh, for Chris Quayle. we didn't know oh, that. That's no. yeah. one's, okay. Yes, then we have a different perspective on that tree. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have no idea. This one, and it's a lot smaller than this. This yeah. isn't a, well, but what is, what is the old saying? Or what is the old saying? You should have planted a tree yesterday. So was there a reason it was there? Like, was she part of? Who was that? She's a second grade teacher. It's outside her desk. Oh, yep. Yeah, then it's outside the second grade window. You know what? It, it, yep. it, then it stays because you know we all know that that can be a hot side of the building, and I, it will be you know it'll be a great place for a picnic table too. Right, because we're talking about picnic tables and benches and and things like that. So we just we need to go back to our person and go. Yeah, remember we're going to get rid of that tree. We're not. So we they do for back. bringing that up, Connie. Yep. We had no idea. Yep. Yeah, we Perfect. definitely don't want to be the bad guys here on that one. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, and it makes the little ones run a little farther, right? Yeah, <laughs> the swing set get the energy out. But there was a there was a grassy area that would that, you know that does allow to move that swing set over. So mm -hmm. it it should all still fit. And someday it'll provide that shade for yeah. those that want to play in the grass in the shade. Will be it will be good. You'll want that. Any other questions? Yeah, so we just really are kind of, this is a, um, so you're aware of what is going on. We kind of just want a little stamp of approval because we, once once I get that budget all in one spot and we can see the big picture, then it probably will move a lot. It will definitely move a lot quicker. Then we'll be able to go make presentations, talk to businesses, um, and get the word out. All right. Thank you. Okay, we move on to the round table, which is the board member's opportunity to lift up questions, comments. Ron, you have something? Um, um, I 
I guess I had, and I guess I apologize. Well, I gotta go with this one. Um, I had some questions. I guess uh, I, I respectfully sent to Janelle, um, and I guess I wanted to bring it up to the to the board. Uh, and it's regarding. I can get it here. Questions. Here we go. I don't know, Janelle. Do you want me to oh, yeah. read your answers, or I no, guess I'm, I'm open to suggestions yeah. here. Um, well, Ron, I got this. Okay. okay. So Ron sent me three different questions, um, and I wasn't sure if those were questions for him to just pass out that. Somebody had a question, and, and he asked me to share that out with you. So, yeah. I'll just... and, and it was kind of pertaining, I guess. You know, when, when I said I'd come on to the school board, it was some of the things I guess I kind of wanted to address, and and I guess I, I just kind of want to know. Um, but there were some other individuals, but I want to make sure I word it right. I gotta find it though. <coughs> it doesn't let me. Uh, I got well, I got where I wrote, or you replied, but I don't have what you actually said. Probably above it or below it. It's and regarding. I guess the first one was the, the cost involved in, in in block scheduling. Is you know is it a is it a savings or is it costing us more money? Yep. So traditionally, I guess, and and my my response back is that I have not done a, a specific analysis of our block schedule compared to what it was prior. Um, traditionally, a block schedule is more um, to maintain um, because you you have fewer opportunities to teach um, because you have four class periods versus six class periods. Okay, um, when you look at um, offering um, four class periods, um, so let's say I have um, we'll use English nine as an example. Um, I only have that English nine teacher could teach. Oh, I can just wait a second. I apologize. I was hoping to find it. Well, and I can. I mean, I can read it to you if you would prefer. But um, that'd be great. So, is there a cost savings? Is there a savings or more cost involved in block schedule versus standard schedule? So here was my response. I've not done the specific cost analysis to determine the exact exact cost differential, but I have been told that typical block schedule tends to be more expensive. What we have run into here is that we do not have a designated middle school and secondary staff, so our staff teach both. So this is an issue in both a block schedule and a traditional schedule. However, when you have the opportunity to teach six class periods versus three, and I say six because when you have a seven period day, you have a prep period, or three and then a block, a prep block. Um, uh, so then um, when you have the opportunity to teach six class periods versus three, there are more places to move classes. So what happens is when you have, okay, so one of the things, um, uh, one of the recognized benefits of the block schedule is to meet the needs of our labs and hands-on courses which allow for more time to teach and allow for practice or project completion. At the sixth and seventh grade level, adjustments were made for the 23-24 school year to have math and language arts every other day, um, all year long. That was a piece of feedback we heard from parents. They were concerned about um, a student having math maybe first quarter and then not having math again um, until later on in, in the block schedule. Um, so by, by having um, paired teachers, they're able to have every other day. And then that partner teacher, they actually can, they could through mutual agreement have kids maybe for two or three days in a row if they were working on something significant. Okay. Um, so as a, as a smaller school, a block schedule can lead to scheduling conflicts for students. Um, and when that happens, the students are required to make choices about which classes they prioritize, which at times has led to frustration and not getting a class at a specific time of the year. Okay, so those are some natural barriers that have taken place. Um, so then the next question was, um, is a teacher overload a common occurrence or is it just with a block schedule? So overloads have been a solution to implement in a couple of scenarios. Um, so this is my response now. If there is a course traditionally an elective, 
which has high demand or interest and there isn't an, a teacher available to teach it due to required courses, a teacher can pick up the offering and get paid on an overload. Additionally, if there is a scenario where we have not been able to fill a teaching position, colleagues uh, will pick up the position through an overload. So over the last couple of years, we have reduced the number of electives to save on teachers being compensated for an overload. So we have not offered as many overloads in the past, in the past couple of years. Um, the maximum amount a teacher can earn for an extra class is $4,570 in a year, and that is prorated for each quarter. That's based on the master agreement. So the master agreement language for overloads has been standing since before the block schedule began. Um, it did occasionally occur in a traditional schedule, um, but it, it was more prominent when we were trying to accommodate more elective courses through a block schedule. Okay. And then the last question was the CPR class that is offered. What does it all entail? Um, hard to imagine that it would take a whole quarter to teach. Okay, I found it, but I, 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 want, I don't want somebody to think that I don't think CPR. Uh, yeah. CPR is not important. I, I took that in college and and I think it is extremely important, but um, you can lead to your answer, I guess. Okay, so our CPR is actually, it's a CPR and first aid class that's offered in the middle school and it's an elective. Um, so it, it not only addresses CPR, um, it's, it's CPR and first aid. Um, so the intent of the elective is to prepare students to recognize and care for a variety of first aid, breathing, cardiac emergencies with adults, children, and infants. It provides them some um, resources to, if they were at home and there was an emergency. It's, so it's not just certified CPR first aid, it's kind of problem solving as a whole. Again, it's an elective that's offered at the middle school. Thank you, Janelle, to yep. clarify. I guess yep. that was a concern I had, so thank Okay, you. yep, sounds good. Um, I have one question. Yep. Quick. Um, with family leave looking like it's going to be, they're going to yeah. pass it. Do we have any idea what that's going to cost us? I have. I. I can't even begin to understand. Okay. Um, well, so the it's going to be paid for out of a payroll tax. Right. Um, and it's a, a tax that's shared between the employee and the employer. Um, what is going to be the biggest concern for me um, is going to be substitute coverage um, because that's that's a cost that we have not accounted for um, and it's unknown at this moment in time if it's going to be 18 weeks 24 weeks you know the so it has passed out of both the house and the senate now it's sitting in conference right. committee so some of those details are yet to be hammered out um, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure uh, what that cost is going to be for us. Um, but we will have to put something into this payroll. The district tax. Has, is we responsible. Will be responsible yes. For putting money in. Yep. I think one of them said 0.7 percent. I don't know if that was together or each. Um, I think that is a total, and then it is split between employer and employee. And I haven't. I don't remember off the top of my head the percentage of the split. I just want people to know, and especially the public, know that there are things being passed. Mm -hmm. The state that are going to affect us financially. You know? There are there are financial implications. Yep. yep. Um, and there's there's a couple of other provisions that are moving that that could have some implications right. yep. um, financially for the school district. Okay. But, yep. Anyone else? And the state is not going to fund any of this. The, the state is not funding so far. As well. It's going to be the school and the teachers funding this program. It is employee and, and employer yep. cost. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? I think we're finished. All right, and it is 3.03.